What's up guys, Mitch with Prison Supply here today with our shop's brand new 100th anniversary 2003 XL 1200C Sportster. So this pristine example of a Sportster we have, what are we gonna do with it? And we're gonna make it look pretty awesome using prison parts, stuff like that. The trick is we're gonna use like hand tools, very basic tools, something that you can do in your driveway and make it very approachable show you how to make a really cool bike. Minimal effort, minimal fab skills involved. And I'm gonna go along, give you tips and tricks along the way. Show you how easy it can be to make your Sportster a cool little ride. What's going on everybody? Mitch with Prison Supply here on day two of our Pit My Sporty build. What we did last time real quick, we put the new seat on, the exhaust, the air cleaner, and the mids. If you didn't see that video, go back, watch it. Get caught up to where we are now. Today, what I think we're gonna do, tank, handlebars, and clean up a lot of this wiring, kind of this whole area here. Make it look a little more clean and see how far we get. Day two, come along. The first thing I'm gonna do is pull the tank. To give me some room to work to get rid of some of the handlebar controls and wiring and everything like that. So. We'll take the tank off, take the vacuum lines off the tank, take the ground lines off the tank, just go from there. Now that I got the tank off, I'm gonna slowly work on getting all the handlebar components off so we can put new risers and new bars on. There's a lot of uh, wiring going on inside of here, so it might take a minute, it might not, it kinda depends on your bike. Use the manual. When it comes to these like connectors and stuff, when you're taking wiring apart, they're not no, I can't say just do this, do that. It's kind of like you gotta feel around, see what loose, feel what's not loose. Don't wanna break anything. But it kind of takes a minute to see how to get the connectors off. The less you can break, the better. Look at that pile, look at that crammed in there. Oh, it's Torx. So, we've hit our first Torx of the day. If you're working on a stock Harley, Go get yourself a Torx set. Torx those little star bits. They're all over Harleys. Make sure your kit has a 27 in it because they're here, they're on the handlebars, they're all over. It's a very useful tool. It's not a 27, but it's still where we'll still talk about it. Right now, this is the only thing holding me to the wire harness. So I'm just gonna follow these wires back and see if there's a plug. And there usually is, I hope there is. So it goes all the way back to this plug here. Hopefully now I can get the, all the handlebars off without cutting any wires. Don't let this uh, like nest of wires intimidate you at all. As long as you don't cut anything, you should be fine. To get your clutch cable off your Hertz. You don't always have to do that. We're gonna to change to uh, hand, different hand controls. But what you'd have to do is loosen the adjuster here, and give yourself some slack, and then you'll be able to take the lever off the top. So now there's also a E-clip in here. You snap that off, pull it off, pry it off with a E-clip hires. If you don't have one, flat head will work. And now we take and push the pin through the bottom and this will come right out. Should come right out, let me get a free hand. Well, can you pull that out? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. There we go, Johnny. It's Porster Man. There we go. And this comes off, and you're free. So back to that Torx T27. I'm just really cutting that cable. Turn signal. <laughs> it's the only thing holding us together at this point is the turn signals. I could probably, maybe I'll be able to move that. Let's try to move it. Let's try to, let's, let's do this right. You can pull it off. <laughs> but, but, but cutting, but cutting. But Mitch, these are, these are 100 meters. <laughs> so? But Mitch! We're taking the throttle side off now and we're gonna use new cables and everything. So I'm gonna disconnect it from the carb. 
you can give yourself some slack by adjusting up here and then it will just come down here pop it up over like that and then it gives you plenty of slack to remove the barrel and you do the same to the other side this one's gonna have a spring in it so you kind of got to bring the spring up to get it out and then you can pop it up over yeah, I can't even see what I'm doing there it's out she's free next thing I'm gonna try to get off is the headlight I'm gonna chase that wire back to the plug and luckily there's a plug and I'm just gonna remove it and then unbolt it from the front What is next, Johnny? Now that I've got this all loose and free, I'm going to take the key and the coil, move them back, take this horn off. For our coil relocation kit, you're gonna have to remove the battery, not down underneath here. So I'm gonna go grab that, remove the battery so we can get everything and run the wires back up to the cylinders. Whoa! Don't use that. So this is our coil relocation bracket. What it's gonna do is mount the coil under here. First step to doing that is to take all your coil wires, the two leads and the spark plug wires, and reroute them all the way back under here. We are at this crucial point now, we're gonna figure out what we're gonna do with this. You have a couple of different options first option is if you you can hide it under your tank and just extend where you need to extend to second option is cut the loom open reroute stuff cut what you don't need that could take a little more time a little more effort third hard option would be to take the whole loom out and rewire the bike from scratch which would also involve putting a new ignition system in because your ignition system right now is run off the vacuum from the carb plus your ignition module. If you wanted to convert it over to points or like a Dynatech ignition, like a single unit, you can do that. That takes a little bit more skill, a little bit more time. What we decided what we're gonna do is cut the loom open, not cut any of the wires, and try to tuck as much as we can underneath the seat. And there's another option if you want, don't want to deal with any of this. There's this company, Gremlin. They make a full Sportster wire harness loom for choppers. We don't make it, we don't sell it, but you can go check them out. It's a really good kit and it makes your life easier if you're not good at wiring. I'm good at wiring, so we're gonna go from there. Got the harness tore down. Things run generally where they need to be. Uh, we were gonna use the starter key switch on this build, but Everything is in such good shape. I don't want to cut up these wires and we're just going to keep the stock keys, which is the quickest, easiest way if you're doing it at home. And that's the way you could do it. Save some time. And our universal key mount will, will fit right up for there. Next step is to wrap the wires that are going to be out and tuck everything and then put everything back together. So I'm using these little posi lock connectors because they're easy. You could do it at home. You don't need wire strippers. You don't need anything. They come in our roadside repair kit and you can just T-splice into the wire that you need. You just slip it over the wire and screw it on and then you have a really good solid connection. You could cut, splice, solder, uh, heat shrink, all that stuff. Or you could do this. It all is gonna be work the same. It's choppers. If it works, it's cool, you know? So we got a lot buttoned up and I showed you how to use the posi lock connectors. And now I'm gonna show the butt connectors that come with our electrical kit. Pretty simple, you get your standard pair of wire crimpers and they have an uninsulated terminal spot. What you're gonna do is put it on, kinda hold it, and then you put your wire in the hole and squeeze. I'll do it to the other side of the ground wire and I'll put a piece of heat shrink over it, which also comes in our DIY electrical kit. We will slide the heat shrink over use a lighter to fix it or a torch or a heat gun whatever you have this is our universal key switch mount which we're going to use 
to mount it at the horn location. It's made to fit stock key switches, so that works out beautifully. And I'll just figure out how we're gonna mount it with some spare hardware, either up or down, I haven't decided yet. And then we mount the bows and the headlight. So this part is kind of just playing with the wire, seeing where the routing looks the best, where things can kind of hold themselves up without a whole bunch of zip ties, because it's always cool if you use less zip ties. Wait. Johnny, please do not show my, my, my filth. It's all my, don't show my shame. Now that we've got all of our electronics pretty buttoned up where we want them, we're gonna put the coil relocation bracket on and run the wires. And I'll show you how to do all of that. First step is to remove the battery, which we've already done, and remove this lower rubber mount under the battery box. And that's where the coil mount will go. You gotta do a little prep work first, but that's the first step. So when you take your coil off, you're gonna get the mounting bracket, which you don't need, the coil, and this little nut bar is what I think it's called. You need to keep the nut bar because it'll hold the coil onto the bracket. We provide countersunk screws, and what you're going to do is pre-assemble this before you put it on the bike. This is the last time you're going to access these screws, so you want to make sure you get them tight now. And then, we've already run the lead for the coil, which is going to power and your ignition. Put that on over here. Slide down and put that nut on to hold it in place temporarily. Now we'll run our spark plug wires. For our kit to reach, you need two sets of spark plug wires because you gotta go down, up, and over. These are our cloth cover spark plug wires. Uh, they come with the spark plug end already attached and then you just cut them to length and you crimp on the terminals that go on the coil. I'm just gonna run them now for length and see where I go, where I need to crimp them, all that stuff. I figured out where I want them. The next step is to cut it to length. Now that you have your spark plug wires cut to length and stripped, you want to slip your boot over the spark plug wire. Okay? And now you take the terminal ends that come with it, and what I like to do is fold it over. So you make sure you get a good connection there. And you take the W crimp. Most players have a W crimp or spark plug terminal crimp on there. And you're going to want to line it up like that. After you fold it over, you just take your spark plug wire in, just a little bit so the crimp will get it. Put your crimp connector on, and just send her home. Kind of move it back and forth, make sure you get a good solid connection. There you go. Nice crimp. And you do the same to the other side. Okay, now that you have both ends crimped, you're going to insert them into your coil and then slide the boot over. And then you're going to take your leads that you ran and connect them onto the back side. And lastly, you put the battery back in and you tighten down both bolts. That battery strap is actually what holds the coil relocate bracket on on this side. So now that you got them both loose, you tighten them down and we're relocated. Now the last thing we need to do to get this bike running again is to let it start. And that's gonna be putting the quick stick on over here. If you don't already know about it, this is your introduction to it. It goes on your starter and physically actuates the solenoid by giving a little pull right here. To get that on, first thing to do is get the exhaust out of the way so it can work. Some Sportsters have these and some don't, these little oil bracket tabs. We're gonna have to take that off to kind of push them out of the way for now. We'll reposition them then when we're done. And the next step will be to take this cover off your starter. So now that you have everything kind of pre-assembled, you're gonna slide it over your starter and get one of the extended bolts that's included in the kit. 
and tighten it on. The quick sticks installed and it comes with this little acorn shift knob on there. And this bike is fancy, so we're gonna give us the ball shift knob. Also available at prismsupply.com. It can fit our four speed shifters as well. Just spices it up just a little bit. Wiring is a big old check off the list. Um, she starts now, she runs, um, needs some gas, but whatever. That's the next step is talk about gas tank and then we'll talk about handlebars. Um, gas tank. We're gonna switch out from the original gas tank that was on there, something a little different. Um, you could put a peanut from lowbrow, whatever you wanna put on there. We're gonna show you a couple of different ways you can do it. We just happen to have this wasp will sit around, this new old stock, never been run, way too nice for the bike, but it matches the build, so we're gonna use it. The first step to getting a new tank mounted is finding the top center line of your backbone. We're gonna use a piece of string. It's gonna wrap this nut to hold it, and then I'll run it down that center line here. And hold it tight, kind of eyeball center from the top, and I know that Roughly here and here are where my holes are going to be. So I'll put a little dot at center. A little dot at center up here. Cool. And then we take the string out of the way. And now we have a pretty decent center line. Close enough for where we need to be. All the way down. So we're going to kind of hold the tank up to where we want it. I think I'm going to rest it pretty much on the frame here. So I'll draw another little dot there and another little dot right in the center of both mounting holes. Pull the tank off and then extend the lines in both directions. And where they meet is where I need to throw a hole. center punch and tap and die set. They're both fairly cheap. This is under $5 at Harbor Freight. Tap and die set you can get for 20 bucks somewhere. You'll use them way more than you think. It's a really good tool to have around the house. I'm gonna mark my center points with the center punch. Come through pre-drill the size to what we need. I'm gonna use 5 16th hardware and I'll pre-drill to that size and then we'll tap it, and I'll show you how to do all that stuff. So that leaves a nice mark for the drill to catch on so it doesn't skate all over the slippery powder coat of the frame. I know that we've said we weren't using any power tools for this build, but if you don't have a drill at home, you shouldn't be doing this. That's all I'm gonna say about that. Now you can also if you had the means, drill this out, put a tap bung in, weld the tap bung, grind it all nice. That's a really nice way to do it. Not everybody can do it that way. We're gonna do it this way until something happens and then maybe do it a different way. So tap and die sets are pretty cheap. If you do something stupid and strip out a bolt, you can fix it. It saves you a lot of money in the long term. There's a whole chart on how to use drill size to tap size and stuff like that. Easily found on the internet. The trick here is just take your time. If it starts to feel weird, it's probably weird. The slower you go, back off a little bit every once in a while. See, that felt weird, so I'm gonna back off. <laughs> okay, and now, I, now you can feel it really grab and you can, don't have to worry so much about it. Just the first couple threads, see now it's, fitting very freely in there, and we have a tap hole. We have these finish washes. They 
our good for Monty tanks. Mounted on the top side, we have a flat version and a coked version. Some tank tabs are flat, some are curved, but it helps you so you get a, a nice solid surface to mount on. The last step to getting a running bike in a tank is putting a pet cup on. And this is our quarter straight stainless steel pet cup. Real simple to put on. Put a little bit of Teflon tape on the threads and put her in the bolts. Lots of tanks have petcock bungs on either side, so we're gonna have to plug it. And we have a magnetic hole plug, which is also quarter NPT. We're just gonna put it on the other side to plug it up. You can also run two petcocks if you want. It's all your choice. Buy two. Buy three, just for spares. We have this nice silicone feeder line available on our website as well. If you want it, it's available in black and clear. Kind of slips right over the bung. You don't, what's really nice about this is you don't need Hose clamps, it just kind of clamps itself over. It's Mitch Zivit. You guys put your tank loose. Dang! I can't believe you guys are using NOS fossil. That's <laughs> what we said. We're like, it's probably too good for this bike, but. <laughs> Handlebars are up next. Those stock risers were not good. We have these prototypes that we made a while back, with like a single bolt riser, and we're gonna put them on, test them out. We're still not sure if we're gonna release them yet, but let us know what you think. Those will be on, then we're gonna try the Cyclone and the Hurricane bars and see which ones we like better. These are our Hurricanes. I think we need the boss man to tell us which one to do. Jake Zibbett. Boss man. Boss man Jake. What, what'd you guess? I don't know. I, I can really go in any direction. I like the fence of the closing marks better. Please. Oh. Now it looks sick like that. That's uh, Next step is grips, throttle, Throttle cable, grip collar, clutch, brakes, all that kind of stuff up here. Go. This is our Super Prism Throttle. And it's available at our website, prismsupply.com. Super easy to put on. It's basically slide on, kind of just put it just a little bit past the end of your bars and tighten the set screws with the right size. Go. Okay, just tighten them down. Two set screws, that easy. So these are our jackhammer grips. If you're trying to put grips on, nice little trick is to use compressed air. If you don't have compressed air, soapy water kind of works. Just regular water works. Hairspray also works. I like to just put a little air in there. And I slide right in. On the other side, we're gonna do the same thing. So we're going to put a grip collar on there first, just to clean things up a bit. And the grip collar is really nice because it just cleans up that gap behind your grips. Makes a nice finished look. This is our 30 inch throttle cable. Real easy to made up with the Super Prism throttle. You just take the cover off the top, you slide the ball end in, just pull it tight snaps in. So the trick is, what you want to do is take this little barrel off the end and put it in place and then with a sharpie mark where you need the barrel to be. Move your barrel just below the mark because you can always adjust it. You'd rather have it too long than too short and you're going to cut your excess off. Once you have your barrel on, you're going to put it into the hole where it needs to be. Now you just struggle for a minute. Get on the struggle bus. So these are gonna be all our polished hand controls. They'll be clutch and brake side. When you order these, you're gonna to have to look at your bore on your current brakes, see what to order. It'll show the bore on the inside there, either 9 16 or 11 16 So it's a pretty easy reinstall. Once you bolt it to the handlebars, you kind of get it where you want it and just reinstall the clutch and retension your cable 
and we're done. You know, there's no real where to put it. You kinda gotta get on the bike and feel it for yourself where it's comfortable where your hands are gonna be. That feels like a comfortable spot. I'll lock her in. So there's an the E-clip on the underside of here. You wanna remove. You gotta keep these little rust washer things, plastic parts. So once you got the cable up, you take the pen, reverse process, put the pen through your clutch cable. Put it back through. E-clip. Go, drop it back in. And you're gonna adjust the tension over by this adjustment here. And pull it so it's just barely catching. I'm gonna adjust the slack out of there. Now just barely wobbles, but not pulling tight. Tonight, hit the jam now, and the clutch is all in. Now brake side's just the same. Clamp this and put it where you want it, and then plumb the brake lines. This one you kinda wanna get in the same angle as your clutch side. Cool. Everything clears. Handlebars, big old check off the list. Last thing for today is headlight. First thing is just to mount it to your front end. You can either drill up through your front end. This year specifically has a hole. A lot of sports do not have a hole. You can use one of our mounts or you can use any other kind of mount you can think of. We have two different kinds of mounts, one a little tab, one that mounts to the ears. Because there's a hole, we're just gonna mount it right in there. This is our headlight wire. We're gonna run up to our headlight. A little trick, what you want is your headlight wire to kind of flex a little bit and give it some spring. So if you take a uh, Phillips head screwdriver and give it a couple wraps, it creates like kind of a makeshift spring. So you won't ever uh, pull your headlight wire out of your headlight. There you go. So we have our headlight mounted and that kind of does it for the top side of the front end and the build for today. And I think it's looking great. So we put like four or five more hours into our Fit My Sporty, getting real close to being cool. Actually pretty cool. We put some tank stuff on, handlebars, throttle, grip, controls. If you like any of those parts, you wanna buy any of those parts, they're all gonna be linked down below. Go to our website, presentsupply.com. You can pick them up, say hi to us, tell us what you think, tell us what we did wrong, tell us what you like. Next week, I think we're gonna start working on tires, fork gators, maybe even foot flush hand shift kind of stuff if you feel lucky thanks a lot see you in two weeks